think that, uh, you know, from my perspective, I guess I would start maybe a little bit earlier uh, in terms of the preparation standpoint, just by saying, you know, you really want to start early on by assessing whether or not private equity is the thing that you specifically really want to get into. And so just trying to speak to as many people in the industry as possible to learn about the industry and to understand what the job entails, I think is a good first step um, in in figuring out whether or not that's ultimately the career path that you want to take. And then once you've decided on private equity more generally, then I think a really important consideration is to understand whether or not you want to focus more on uh, earlier stage growth and VC investing versus later stage buyout. Uh, and then within buyout, I think you can even hone in a little bit more on whether or not you want to be more operationally focused or a little bit more financial engineering focused. And so just trying to talk to as many different people in the industry as possible to learn about what makes the most sense for you and what you're most interested in is a good, good way to really hone down on the firms that you're most interested in. And then once you figure it out what firms you're most interested in, that does to some degree determine how you'll ultimately prepare for those interviews. Um, and so, you know, I guess I can really only speak to my own personal experience, but from my experience, I, I'd say generally the split of interview preparation is largely consistent. I think with what Greg said, I would tack on that. I think I also spent, um, I don't know, maybe 20% of my time just, you know, rehashing my behavioral questions because the behavioral aspect, uh, and the, and the fit and culture aspect is something that I think a lot of these private equity firms do care quite a lot about just given how small they are and how small a lot of the teams are. I know that in my office where around 10 people in the New York office. So you do have the opportunity to work with just about everybody uh, who's more senior than you in the New York office. And so making sure that you have a really good fit with the, the culture was really important, not just for me, but for the firm as well. Um, and then, you know, really on the case, on the case study side of things, I'd say that there are a lot of really great books you can dive into to learn about how to develop your own framework as an investor. So that when you're asked that question of whether or not you would invest yourself, you can really call upon um, some of the experience that you've read about and some of that framework you've developed early on. And so those books that I'd really recommend uh, tackling are Competition Demystified. And there's also a great summary as well, a bit of a different world than we were going through it. But I remember I'd read Competition Demystified at night, and then I'd reread the summary on the, the subway to work in the morning just to make sure that I was really catching everything that was being uh, laid out. And then um, another great book is Howard Marks is the Most Important Thing. I think personally, I was listening to this one on audiobook on my commutes to work. Um, and then Warren Buffett's Unedited Letters to Shareholders is another great way to get an inside look at one of the most storied names in investors in investing and how he thinks about how his investments. And then um, there are a couple of other books that I'd recommend that I probably recommend reading after you've read these initial ones that are more just traditional investing books. And these books are Phil Fisher's Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits and Benjamin Graham's The Intelligent Investor. Um, but I think that, you know, between all those different books, as well as the, the podcast that Greg mentioned, you'll really be able to get a good sense of how you think about investing. And I'd probably recommend, you know, as a fail safe, that you, rec that you think about what in your mind is maybe the most important gating item for an investment to be above the bar. And so I know that some of the this was advice that some of the more senior analysts when I was going through the recruiting process had provided to me and for him, his most important uh, kind of gating item that he'd fall back on when asked if he didn't have anything else come to mind immediately was, um, was around, you know, the competitive differentiation and the most that a company was able to provide. And I think when I was going through it, the one that I, I focused on a lot was operating leverage. And, you know, I think that, as you read these different books, you'll really find that you have one thing that you think is kind of the most important factor for an investment. Of course, investments are very complex and a lot of different things have to go right, but having something just, just, just to fall back on so that when you're, if you're in an interview and you're asked, you can always fall back on that if needed, I think it's just a good backup to have in your back pocket.